So in this type of knot, we have a couple of ceramic inlay preparations, DO, and then on the second premolar, it's an MO inlay onlay. And uh, the preparations are quite simple to do, as is the impression, but sometimes providing a, a provisional restoration could be a challenge. What we want to do today is show you a simple technique of using a product that's been around in dentistry for a long time in order to accomplish this goal. Hi, the product is called Duraseal, and Duraseal is made by Reliance. Uh, it's the same company that makes Duralay, which is often used for patterns. Uh, this product is basically is a polymethyl methacrylate with plasticizers. So uh, when you take the liquid and powder and you mix them together, you get a typical like uh, setting reaction which, with any PMMAs, but you're not going to find that the product will ever achieve a full hard set. It stays somewhat rubbery. Uh, which is uh, to our advantage to be used uh, for removing the temporaries and it will show you how that's done. The other parts are we want to have some disposable or glass dappen dishes. Uh, this is uh, gutta percha. It's made by Hygienic Company. This is a, a dental stopping material and we're going to take a small piece of this, heat it up and use that uh, at the gingival increment and the reason for using the gingival is to protect the gingiva from the acrylic which is somewhat uh, toxic to the tissue and this will keep the tissue very healthy and when we go to deliver the restorations the tissue will be in a much better state. Another uh, item we're going to need is some kind of placing instrument. This is a, a condenser. You could use a cord packing instrument, whatever, in order to place the small piece of warm gutta percha into the box area. And then we're going to use a, a brush, and the brush will be used in the, in the liquid and powder uh, rather quickly in order to, to apply the covering of Duraseal over the surface. All right, so we'll dispense some of the product. Don't be uh, too conservative. Go ahead and start with a, a large amount. It's very uh, inexpensive product. It's helpful to cut the gutta percha into small little segments. It can be done with some scissors or maybe a scalpel. So I'm going to warm up the instrument, uh, pick up some of the gutta percha, and, and what I usually tip, do is have my dental assistants uh, prepare small pieces and keep them in my box. And then we'll just warm it slightly over the flame, and you know it, it's, it becomes soft at this point. And then the product is then inserted into the box area. And it's gentle pressure. You don't want to push too hard. If you push too hard, you're going to actually maybe impart a little bit of orthodontic movement in the teeth, and you'll have difficulties with contact management at the time of delivery of the prosthesis. So just a slight uh, indentation. Some uh, clinicians have used the technique of putting a small little dimple in here as well to help retain some of the Duraseal material on top. Well, draw your attention to the way this is done. It's a very quick process. We'll take the bender brush, dip it in the, the monomer, and then we pick up some of the powder, and then return back to the monomer for a quick dip, and then the product is then just placed into the cavities. Once again, go back, pick up some more Duraseal, and then just wipe it off like this. Uh, filling up the holes first and then covering over the surfaces and actually uh, intentionally adding more product to the interproximal areas, covering the enamel margins. It actually helps to protect the enamel margins and we don't have uh, any issues with fracturing of the, of the delicate enamel margins. In the case of like that onlay, that marginal ridge might be prone to, to fracture. And uh, this is basically it. It doesn't have a very pleasant odor. You have to warn your patients that it's a rather strong acrylic smell. And uh, a couple little lobs on there. And we can actually just by uh, little by little build up a little bit of a uh, cuss tip there on the lingual if you needed to for that onlay. You can build that up like that. Yeah, there we go. Not much, not much effort involved. At at this point, you you take the the, the patient's uh, own saliva and wipe it on the opposing teeth. And when the patient bites together, hopefully I can show you on this typing on here. They'll bite together. 
a few times, we'll have them bite up and down. And if we use saliva, it won't stick to the opposing teeth. So a little saliva here or moisture of some kind. Have the patient bite a few times, have them go through excursive movements, and then uh, at that point, your finger, which has got some saliva on it, can be used just to sort of push and pack the material around, have the patient bite down again, and the occlusion will be optimal. Because at this point, the procedure is done. Instruct the patient that they will not be able to floss between their teeth, but this is just a short-term uh, limitation. When we go to remove the product, the gutta percha is going to protect the tissues from any of the, the toxic elements in the, this product and the tissue will actually be very, very healthy, retracted, uh, it won't be uh, typically it isn't bleeding, and it really facilitates delivery of the restorations. The restoration, this product does tend to um, leak a little bit, so there may be a little bit of sensitivity with some patients, but typically it's, uh, it's, it's not a problem. You have to also instruct them not to chew anything too sticky or gummy. It will tend to pull these out. I, I'm comfortable with this uh, temporary technique for up to two weeks. Any more than two weeks, we need to think about a longer-term provisional technique. It's not very sophisticated, but it's very, very practical. Let's show you what it, the removal uh, sequence is like. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So now it's been a week or, or two since uh, we placed the, the, the dental stopping. and. And we're not showing it here, but you'll typically find the material becomes uh, stained by whatever foods the patient's eating. They tend to look a little more yellow. Um, they can pick up a little bit of an odor as well. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's not a big uh, problem for patients, but uh, just to warn you. And to pull the product out, it is going to stay in a uh, plastic state, and it won't, um, it won't be difficult to remove at all. Usually it comes out in one piece. We're, we're doing this a little premature. We haven't allowed the product to really age in the mouth. But it comes right out in this uh, sort of, uh, usually as one piece, and it leaves behind uh, the gutta percha. The gutta percha has been sitting in here for two weeks, and when we remove this, you might be uh, pleasantly surprised to note that the tissue is not only retracted, but also is not inflamed and is not bleeding uh, aggressively. So it provides for an excellent uh, opportunity to cement the restorations without any tissue issues. Uh, obviously, placing a rubber dam would be uh, helpful in this situation, but in the cases where a rubber dam is not possible, um, simply um, keeping the teeth dry will typically uh, allow you to, to cement the restorations without any uh, interference from tissue bleeding of any kind. The, the product is removed. It's really this easy. There is no cement that is used when we seat these uh, restorations. Very, very simple. Um, one of the advantages of not using a cement is that there is no cement to clean up. This product comes out very, very easily. The Duracell and the dental stopping both don't adhere to tooth structure. They, they come off usually in one piece, quite simple. Uh, the teeth are maintained in the exact occlusal and exact proximal position. There is no drifting. Uh, typically when we make provisionals made out of a hard acrylic or a bisacral product and we cement them, we have to do a significant amount of occlusal adjustment. It would be very easy to over adjust to allow the patient to be comfortable only to find that teeth will super erupt and requiring more adjustments. This saves us time because we don't have to do the adjustments in the final restorations proximally or occlusally that we find in so many of the other provisional techniques. So I thought I'd share that with you. I think it's an excellent opportunity to uh, save some time in your practice and also produce restorations of the highest quality. Okay, so let's take a look at what's really happening with this uh, dental stopping. I'm going to uh, draw a couple of premolars here because that's the, the case that we showed in the video. And um, it's something that you really can't see from the video, but it's very uh, helpful and important to understand that the dental stopping material in these preparations is not just delicately covering the box area, but it actually is extending into the sulcus area. So the dental stopping that we placed between the inlay and the onlay covers the box areas, but also, and more importantly, covers the gingival area to protect the subsequent 
Duracell product from touching the tissue. This creates this deflection of the papilla and provides that retraction that actually helps us when it comes time to cementation. So on top of this, we'll then have the uh, secondary layer of uh, the Duracell product. So this area would be the dental stopping. And here is the Duracell. And the patient obviously will not be able to floss their teeth, which you may be alarmed at hearing that, thinking that this won't be healthy, but in fact what we find is that the tissue is very healthy and temporarily retracted to facilitate uh, the cementation phase. I hope that helps clarify uh, what exactly is happening at the interproximal region.